Hey y'all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the South, more specifically Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm outside of Antique Archaeology, a antiques are owned by Mike, who is one of the American pickers, and I have kind of a love-hate relationship with that show. I've always loved the places they went, the things they found, but I never really liked how they badgered people and, and, and harass people into getting a super low price. You see people being pressured into giving up things that maybe they didn't want to give up, but I guess that's business, and that's how business is done. Of course, there was that episode at the Museum of Appalachia where they bought out Harrison Mays's bottles, which broke my heart because I would have loved to get one of those myself, and I hope they had the, the respect for Harrison Mays that I do. And also, Frank, the, the shorter guy, he purchased this folk art, which was a big design made out of antique pencils, and he said he was gonna pick the pencils off and sell them individually. But you know, you buy a piece of folk art and then you destroy it, I thought that was a little disrespectful. On the other hand, <laughs> the show has actually featured some of my photography before. Um, they used a picture I took of a, Biltmore, or a Dairy Biltmore sign in Asheville and a picture of a moonshine still as well. So, I don't know why I'm walking away from the place, but we're going to head back in there and uh, check it out. Apparently they got, they got some antiques from the show and, uh, you know, some other things as well. This looks like it may be a precursor to the Zoltar days, the gypsy fortune teller. This is gypsy grandma. Ham's beer, I guess their uh, mascot was a drunken panda of some sort. I must admit, I certainly have an urge now to drink syrup out of a spaceman. Box of glass eyes, now that's nice and creepy. Well played. I can't remember this from an episode. This is a, a uh, Masonic decoration that they acquired. Look at that for... $1,200, you own your very own Wax Elvis. Now this is pretty magnificent. $2,000, but if I had that sort of cash, I would certainly buy this original Mountain Dew mascot hillbilly. Now they've really earned my respect. They have a wolf boy in a little casket. I wonder if that's a Homer Tate original. It actually looks like Homer Tate's work. Also creepy, this tooth box. The Oklahoma Motorcycle Club. Interesting, I would have picked a more intimidating uh, mascot than a, than a cat hobo. Nice old moose wearing a hat there. This elephant is actually coin operated. I guess it was a ride for children or overzealous adults. So they had some very cool stuff in there. Um, of course, uh, seems like probably they do the most of their business selling selling merchandise, t-shirts, and whatnot. A lot of like, um, if there's an antique store that has some sort of following or has been on a TV show, the antiques themselves are almost always going to be uh, priced to, to just a ridiculous level. But uh, it's still cool to go around and look because you know you're you're welcome to come and, and look as if it were a museum. Check out this weird roundabout here. I don't know what these colorful sticks are. Let's take a pop into Jack White's Third Man Records. That looks like some of the Novelties and machines are not currently operational. This was a photo booth, a really, really old timey photo booth. It looks like it's not working. This automatic recording studio. Step in and record your voice. Hear it, play it. Look at this, the Visograph. All right, so this is crazy. I'm getting ready to, to record in here. Um, lady was telling me there's only two of these machines in existence and they both belong to Jack White. Said that Neil Young, U2, and, and, and just a slew of other famous people have recorded in this booth, so very cool. I think it was Willie Nelson, she said. So once I hit the button, it's gonna, it's gonna get ready and it's gonna press my voice directly onto a record, so 
says this. Here's getting all geared up. The record's been placed down in there. The wait. Oh, we got a count down there, 150 seconds. Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee, more specifically, Third Man Records. And I decided to recite a poem by one of my favorite poets, a Mr. Shell Silverstein. Listen to the mustn'ts, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never-haves, then listen close to me. Anything can happen, child. Anything can be. All right, so still, still cutting my record there. Be interesting to see how this turns out. Oh, there's my record. I'm gonna drop it down in there. Wow, hot off the presses. There we are. I do have one of these. Jack White's mold of attics. You can always use more than one. All right. There it is. Hey, you all. Carpet Bagger here, coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee, more specifically, Third Man Records. And I decided to recite a poem by one of my favorite poets, a Mr. Shell Silverstein. Listen to the mustn'ts, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never-haves, then listen close to me. Anything can happen, child. Anything can be. There's some Grammys, and then there's the Legos from Fell in Love with the Girl, one of the first White Stripes songs I ever heard. Fortunately, the monkeys are napping. Pretty cool, though. They actually have a Hotel Yorba 3D puzzle, a 3D model. It's a really scary hotel in Detroit. They a really good song about it. So very cool. As I said, Jack White, huge, huge influence on my young adulthood. Literally the only thing I listened to for a period of my life, the White Stripes, were truly amazing. And this is a truly amazing place. Some of these old machines. Um, never saw, never, never had a place where I could actually record my own voice directly onto a record. And it came out pretty, pretty well. Um, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you'd like to see other places that I've been, uh, please check down in the description. I have an interactive map that'll show you all those places that I've been. Um, also, uh, if you'd like to contribute to the channel, I sell t-shirts down below as well as a Patreon page where I will send you postcards uh, once a month if you are a $3 or more subscriber. So for now, this one's in the bag.